comforted him. 7 1 6 Cleanse ourselves from the filthy flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. 7 7 12 Comfort of the Corinthians' obedience, hopes for more obedience. 7 13 16 Comfort for their reception of Titus and him. 7 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Since God has given us these promises to live eternal in the heavens, 5 1, to have the Son's righteousness by faith, 521, and that He will have a Father to Son relationship with us, 618, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, sinful actions, and spirit, thoughts contrary to God, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul's group is to live worthy of our position as ambassadors representing Jesus Christ in His ministry of reconciliation of Gentiles in mystery bound for heaven. After our rapture, Peter's group will be a kingdom of priests helping Gentiles in prophecy to be saved into his kingdom on earth, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. If we think the four Gospels and early Acts are for us in mystery, then we put ourselves under the law. Paul said the law activates our sinful flesh, Rom. 7 9. We start thinking and doing the things we hate and become legalistic, judgmental, and critical. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Gal. 5.16 His word in our minds and heart works in our lives, 1 Thess. 2.13 The Spirit uses His word to make us useful when we obey from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness, Rom. 6.17.18 Our thinking determines our behavior. Our spirit is in our minds. We have victory over the flesh when we make a conscious decision to put off our old man, old Adamic sins we do when in the flesh, as we put on the new man, Christ, as we renew, reprogram, our minds in his word rightly divided, f. 4 colon 22 dash 24. We just say no, I am not doing that sinful behavior because that is not who I am anymore. When we have a bad thought we say I am taking that thought captive and I refuse to think about that. Do not behave like the lost. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in. Sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, one thess. 4 colon 3 dash 7, Christ cleanses us with his word. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. F. 5 25 27. The grace doctrine transforms us and our conduct from the inside out into the image of his Son. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 3.18 Satan does not want us to know that the life of Jesus in us. 4.11 Grace teaches us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world. Titus 2 verse 12 We want to be gracious to others so they will be willing to hear the message of Christ. We need to cleanse ourselves from false doctrine and not be reluctant to leave those who teach that the body of Christ began in Acts 2. We need to study God's word his way and divide the truth where God divides it. 2 Tim 2.15 Paul said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. 2 Tim 2 7 Paul's letters are directly to and about us in the body of Christ. But, the rest of the Bible is for our learning, Rom. 15 colon 4, we study all of the Bible from a Pauline perspective. God through Paul has told us to separate from following Christ's earthly ministry, 516, Rom. 15 colon 8, and to follow Paul to follow Christ, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, there is nothing wrong with either the law or Christ's ministry on earth, it is just not our instructions. When we trust the preaching of Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, the Spirit in us produce fruit unto holiness, Gal. 522, 23, dot. To receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have.
defrauded no man. Our doctrine is what will help you live holy lives, so Corinthians please receive us. Paul defends himself because the false ministers accused him of what they were doing, they wronged, degraded, and swindled them. Paul wanted all of them to realize that his apostleship was Christ's message to the Gentiles from the Lord in this dispensation, Rom 11.13, 15.16, F. 3.1-9, but Satan's policy of evil is to conceal the mystery Christ gave to Paul. 3. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before, that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Paul is not saying this to find fault with them. He is making an appeal to them to believe he and his co-workers are true ministers of Christ. He has said before that their heart's desire is to die and live with them in heaven, for colon 14-16. God's glory plan is to populate heaven and earth with two different groups of people that believed what he said, f. 1 colon 9, 10. Believers will glorify his son, the son and the father will glorify each other, and the Holy Ghost will glorify both. All believers will have a part in this glorious celebration for all eternity. For great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my glorying of you, I am filled with comfort, I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Paul had great boldness to compare his ministry with Christ and all other ministries with Belial. I praise you for what I now hear. I am full of comfort and overflowing with joy. You made all our tribulations worth it. 5-4 When we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, without were fightings, within were fears. Paul now continues where he left off in verse 213. When we came to Macedonia we were restless, there were struggles from without and fears within. Paul was fearful that Satan may cause more in Corinth to turn away from him. He worried after Titus did not show up when and where expected. He probably also wondered how things would turn out in Ephesus after his nearly three-year ministry there ended abruptly in one day. Joys, sorrows, fears, and questions crowded his mind. Paul wanted all people to believe the good news of Calvary and be freely saved by faith. Rom 3 colon 21 dash 26 1 Cor 15 colon 3 4 6 Nevertheless God, that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, but God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us with the coming of Titus. 7 And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Titus told Paul that many Corinthians fervently believed Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and that the dispensation of the grace began with him in Acts 9, 1 Tim, 1 15, 16, f. 3 colon 2, Paul was not only comforted by his warm reunion with Titus, but by how Titus was consoled and comforted by your genuine sorrow and fervent mind toward him, which made him rejoice even more. Many who mourned over their sin of preaching something other than what Paul said, were on fire for Paul again and were eager to see him, so he rejoiced. 8 For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Paul had been wondering that maybe the letter he sent was too stern and that perhaps he should not have sent it. But the letter had been effective. It had done its work in their hearts, they had real sorrow for a season. In 1 Corinthians, Paul corrects their thinking, conduct, and service to God. What matters is Christ crucified, not the wisdom of men. He calls them carnal and babes as he deals with the division among them, their overemphasis on temporary sign gifts, and going to public courts to solve their disputes. He told them that God had a secret plan to form the body of Christ that Satan did not know about because it was not in the Bible yet. If Satan had known, he would not have allowed Christ to be crucified, 1 Cor 2 6-8. He told them about the judgment seat of Christ. He informed them that he was the steward of the mysteries, the master builder, 1 Cor 3:10 of the dispensation that God had entrusted to him, 1 Cor 9:17. He defended his apostleship and wanted them to follow him as he follows Christ, not 10,000 instructors, 1 Cor. 4 colon 15 17. He said that they were puffed up and should have dealt with the fornicator by putting him out of their assembly. 
Paul is always careful to give all the glory to Christ who is in him. Then he answered their questions about marriage, eating food offered to idols, and the resurrection. They should not be unbelievers like Israel in the wilderness. He corrected them regarding respectfully celebrating the Lord's death with the Lord's Supper and restored order in the church. He told them that sign gifts would end when he had received the full revelation of the mystery from Christ, 1 Cor. 13,8-13, and to do everything with charity. He said that just as the resurrection of Christ was a proven witnessed fact, so is our rapture, resurrection. He ended the letter telling them that he would visit, but not yet because he had a great ministry opportunity in Ephesus. In the meantime, he wanted them to take up a collection for Peter's group in Jerusalem. Paul said, If any man think himself to be spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. 1 Corinthians 14 verses 37 and 38. 9 Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Now I rejoice not because I made you sorry, but that you sorrowed to the point that you changed your minds and obeyed my apostolic authority and dealt with the offender. The letter worked effectually for you sorrowed in a godly way. We wrote it so we would not leave you with spiritual damage. Uncorrected and continuing to do wrong. It is loving to correct people when they are in error. 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Godly sorrow works to save us from error, we are never sorry for believing God's truth, but the sorrow of the world leads to death. The sorrow of the world is characterized by self-pity, blaming others, or ourselves which may result in depression, self-absorption, and suicide, PROV. 18 colon 2. Satan wants to deceive people so they die and go to hell. 11 For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yeah, what clearing of yourselves, yeah, what indignation, yeah, what fear, yeah, what vehement desire, yeah, what zeal, yeah, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. The Corinthians sorrowed after a godly sort, changed their minds, and obeyed their apostle. They cleared their minds of the wrong thinking that resulted in wrong action and even cleared up their own fornication. Your sorrow was the godly kind when you realized your error. You demonstrated regret and removed the fornicator from your assembly. By putting him out of the assembly you vindicated yourselves of condoning the fornicator's sin. You became indignant of his sin, feared God, and did what was right. Your vehement zeal led you to carry out the appropriate punishment of the offender, revenge. You proved your obedience to God's word by clearing yourselves of any guilt of condoning the incest. 1 Cor. 5 colon 1. 12 Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. I did not write the letter for the sake of the person that did wrong, nor for the sake of the person that was wronged, but for your sakes. The letter was to let you know the loving care we have for you before God. 2 colon 4. 13 Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yeah, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. We were comforted by you when we united with Titus. We were exceedingly joyful for the joy of Titus because his spirit was so invigorated by your response to him. Their obedience to Paul's instructions refreshed and boosted his spirit. Paul was delighted by the respectful way Titus was received and believed. 14 For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed, but as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. If I boasted of you too, Titus, I am not ashamed of anything I said to him, for just as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so, our bragging about you turned out to be true. Paul is proud of them for they responded to the letter just as he told Titus they would. 15 And his inward affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. Titus' job was to convince the Corinthians that Christ is indeed working his heavenly ministry through Paul, f. 2 colon 6, 
Titus was happy that many of them were now zealous to follow Paul. They had respectfully welcomed him and listened to what he had to say about Christ's true ministry to them through Paul. The abundant love Titus has in his heart for you is evident. He remembered your concern and willingness to obey my apostolic instructions in the letter. You welcomed him with trepidation and trembling. Paul had once trembled with godly fear for the sake of their salvation, 1 Cor. 2 colon 3. 16 I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things. Paul is relieved and rejoices that most of them had wisely obeyed his apostolic authority and directions. His love and care for them in his letters were working. They had obeyed in the matter concerning the fornicator so Paul hoped they will do right in all things. He is confident that they are on the right track moving in the right direction of following Paul to follow Christ. Although his ministry at Ephesus had been dealt a big blow, it seemed that Corinth was doing well. Souls were saved in strategic areas. The Corinthians comforted Titus, who comforted Paul, and now Paul comforted them. He knew that his next visit to them would be an enjoyable one. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 KJB Timp is running out. 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have one succored thee, behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. Chapter 8 Grace Giving 8 colon 1 dash 6 The example of the churches in Macedonia. 8 colon 7 dash 15 The example of Christ. Giving proportionately. 8 colon 16 dash 24 Three trusted representatives to carry the money. 8 colon 1 Moreover, brethren, we do to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, to how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Apostle Paul's group decided to give to Peter's group. We also want you to know the grace God conferred on the churches of Macedonia, in Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea. During a time of severe persecution, the grace of God, His Spirit, aroused in these church members the desire to lavishly and generously give to Peter's group. They gave out of the abundance of their joy despite their deep poverty. The Thessalonian church is a model for us in the body of Christ. They believed what Christ said through Paul and wanted his message to go out to all the world, 1 Thess. 1 colon 1 dash 10, 2 13. On the road to Damascus Jesus told Paul that he was now sending him to save the Gentiles and that Christ would give them an inheritance among those who were already set apart to him, Peter's group, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Acts 26 colon 17 b 18. No one knew that the household of God was a duplex until Christ revealed it to Paul. The blueprint for the other side of the building was not known until Christ revealed it to Paul. The duplex represents the family of true believers in heaven and earth. F. 2.19, 3.15 Christ gave Paul the blueprint for the whole other side. See God's secret page 69. 3. For to their power, I bear record, yeah, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, for praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift, and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Paul said, to their credit, I want to go on record, yes, beyond their own power, it was the power of Jesus in them, they were willing to give to God. They begged us insistently to accept their gift and allow them to partner with us in contributing to the poor saints in Jerusalem. 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. And this they did, above what we had hoped, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. Six in so much that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Thrilled that they gave even beyond what we expected we urged Titus, that as he has begun, to assist you to let the life of Jesus finish the same grace in you also. 7 Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Since you overflow in everything, be sure to abound in this grace also. God gave the Corinthians more sign gifts than any of Paul's other churches to show the Jews in the synagogue next door that God was now working in them, Acts 18 verse 7, 1 Cor. 
122. The Corinthians had faith because of the words Christ inspired Paul preached to them, Rom. 1017. Utterance is the gift of speaking in tongues or languages that they had not previously learned. Knowledge is the gift of special knowledge of what God was doing that he revealed first to Paul and then to them. All diligence is to carefully follow Paul. The purpose of the sign gifts was to give spiritual understanding until the Bible was written. Paul finished informing the Jews of God's dispensational shift at the end of Acts 28, Acts 28 verse 28, Rom. 1111, Paul had received the complete revelation of the mystery even though it was not all written down yet, Rom. 1529, 1 Cor. 13,8-10. Spiritual signs are different from spiritual graces. The list in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 are the graces produced by the Spirit, not signs. Grace giving is something the Spirit accomplishes through the believer. It is the life of Jesus and his message through Paul working in the believer, for 11. 8 I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. I am not requiring you to give, like under the law, I am inviting you to prove the sincerity of your love by doing the same as the other churches who voluntarily already gave and were excited to participate in God's work. The saints in Jerusalem were poor because Christ had told them to sell all that they had, Luke 12 10, 31 to 34. Peter's group sold what they had and had all things in common, Acts 4 verse 32. They will do that again during Jacob's trouble since they will not be able to buy or sell because they will not take the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 verses 17 and 18. Peter's group gave Israel a one-year renewed offer of the kingdom since they did not know that when they had Jesus. Killed, they really killed their Messiah. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Peter's group clearly preached that Jesus of Nazareth was in fact their Messiah and King, Acts 2 verse 38. At the end of that one year, their final rejection or blasphemy of the Holy Ghost culminated with the stoning of Stephen, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9, Acts 7, Romans 11 verse 12. On the cross, the first words out of the mouth of Jesus were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, Luke 23 verse 34. The Holy Ghost speaking through Stephen cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge, Acts 7 verse 60. God postponed Peter's group and the tribulation, Acts 15, Gal, 2 colon 7 dash 9, and began the mystery. So now the persecuted prophecy saints in Jerusalem were poor. 9 For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. For you know that it was by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that he proved his love by his sacrifice. For you know the gracious generosity of the Lord Jesus Christ that though he was the rich son of God, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be rich. The Son of God laid aside his glory in heaven, not his deity, and humbled himself and became a man and was obedient unto death. Phil. 2 colon 5 dash 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart, PSA. 40 colon 8, the Son of God kept the law perfectly, then he willingly suffered death in our place, so two groups may receive the riches of his spirit, his life, and his righteousness, 3 colon 3, 4 11, 5 21. But the Lord also rose, and so will we, 4 14, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. The sinner who trusts that Christ's blood paid for their sins and his resurrection receives the gift of righteousness and eternal life. Rom. 5 17, 6 23. 10 And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Paul advises them to continue to carry out the pledges they made a year ago. In 1 Corinthians, Paul had told them exactly when, the frequency, and how to collect the offering for Jerusalem every Sunday a portion of their excess, as God had helped them to prosper, should be gathered, 1 Cor. 16 1 3. Why are the saints in Jerusalem poor? Because the nation of Israel fell, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, the riches of the world, the riches of the Gentiles, Rom. 11 11, 12. The Gentiles, people of all nations, now have an opportunity to receive his spirit and have eternal life by faith in what Jesus has done. 
the Gentiles did not have this opportunity in time past. F. 2 colon 11 13. It was not the believing remnant's fault that the nation of Israel did not believe them. The little flock did their part. Luke 12 verse 32. Now Gentiles have an opportunity to be spiritually blessed during this dispensation of God's grace and Israel's national blindness. F. 3 colon 2. Wrong. 11 25. Peter's group was poor for no fault of their own, so now they can bless the little flock because God wants them to, Rom. 15 colon 25 dash 29. Asterisk it is important to note that the little flock, Peter's group, died out in the first century, but will continue after our rapture. Today Israel is in apostasy. We do not need to bless that nation, but the Jews need to hear the gospel of Christ as much as anyone else. We should witness to all people, both Jews and Gentiles. 11 Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. Perform the doing of it in a few words Paul gets to the heart of the matter. Since you had a will to donate, now do what you said. Words are good, but actions are better. Give out of what you have. 12 For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For if there is a willing mind, thoughts precede action, it is accepted that a man gives out of his surplus, net, not out of his gross, before subtracting expenses. Give according to what you have, not according to what you do not have. Paul advocates proportionate giving, a percentage of a person's income. This is the only fair way of giving since people have varying amounts. A tithe is a tenth, a proportion that precedes the law, Genesis 14 verse 20. A tenth is a fair amount for rich and poor in any dispensation. In contrast to the law, that made giving a divine requirement, grace giving is voluntary. We are not under the law, but under grace and we can give more if we want to. Giving is a privilege. It is natural to want to support a ministry that does the will of God, gal. 6 colon 6, our books help to accelerate coming to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, many buy all our books and share them with family and friends. Book reviews on Amazon bless our ministry greatly. Some donate using PayPal on our website mariannemanley.com keeping us in paper, ink, and art supplies. Others share the Bible lessons on social media. 13 For I mean not that other men be eased, and ye burdened, Paul said, my purpose is not to burden you so others can have it easier. 14 But by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality, that there is the Macedonian churches. The Corinthians can make up for what the Macedonians could not give, and they can make up for what the Corinthians do not give. Paul wants all the churches to give so that the burden to supply the needs of the saints in Jerusalem will be spread out. 15 As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Paul uses an example from the Old Testament of gathering manna, Exodus 16 verses 16 to 18, everyone ended up with an equal amount, one homer. No one had anything left over, and no one had less than the other. By giving a percentage of what they have, they will each feel the same pinch. Does God care how we spend what's in our wallet? Yes. Our old man Adam, the sin nature, the flesh, is selfish, stingy, and greedy, but our new man Christ is kind, generous, and loving. Who are we? We are new creatures in Christ, 517. Let us let the new man, Jesus Christ, live in and through us, Rom. 8 colon 2, 12 colon 2. 16 But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. Paul thanks God for the diligent care Titus has in his heart for them to also give. 17 For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward, of his own accord he went unto you. Titus not only accepted the job but volunteered on his own to go back to Corinth to finish the collection there so that it would be ready when Paul arrived. 18 And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. Paul sent another brother with Titus who was praised of all the churches for his understanding of the gospel, the good news Christ gave to Paul. 
Paul does not mention any names so we do not know who the men are but they may be some of the ones in Acts 20 verse 4. This brother was chosen by the churches to travel with Paul and his friends when they go to Jerusalem to deliver the money, grace, dot. 19 and not that only, but who is also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord, and declaration of your ready mind, they are going to administer this contribution to the saints in Jerusalem who have the same Lord for his glory. The Corinthians ready minds to give encouraged the Macedonians. 20 avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, by having several people in charge of the abundant offering we will avoid any blame. 21 providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. We want to demonstrate an honest handling of the funds, in the sight of the Lord, and in the sight of men. 22 And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent. Upon the e great confidence which I have in you. We are also sending along a third brother, who has often proved to be very diligent in many things. But now he is even more diligent since he has the same confidence that I have in you, that you understand what Jesus is doing for you through me. 23 Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches, and the glory of Christ. If anyone asks, Titus is my trustworthy partner and helper in the ministry and so are the other two messengers of the churches for the glory of Christ. 24 Wherefore shew ye to them, and before the churches, the proof of your love, and of our boasting on your behalf. Therefore show them hospitality in the sight of the churches, prove your love by your tangible contribution, allow his spirit to work this grace in you, thus proving that we were right to brag about you. Paul was pelted with stones until he died, but revived. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5 KJB Chapter 9 Be generous because God has lavished His grace on us 9-1-5 Your willingness to give encouraged others. 9-6-11 Giving brings blessings to ourselves. 9-12-15 Giving brings glory to God. No one can outgive God. 9-1 For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, too for I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. 3 Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready, for lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared, we, that we say not, ye, should be ashamed in the same confident boasting. I do not have to tell you about the great need of Peter's group in Jerusalem. In anticipation of the wrath they had sold all they had and then came the great famine predicted by Agabus, Acts 11 verse 28. Paul and Barnabas had brought those saints an offering then also, Acts 12 verse 25. Paul had used the Macedonians to encourage the Corinthians to give, now he says that the Corinthians' willingness to give a year ago had encouraged the Macedonians. The mention of a year ago is how we know that the Corinthian letters were penned a year apart. Paul says that he sent the three brethren, his fellow helper, Titus, and the two messengers in 823 to collect their bounty before he and the Macedonians arrive, Acts 20 verse 4. Paul says that he and his friends do not want to be embarrassed for having bragged about their pledge. 5 Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren, that they would go before unto you, and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof he had noticed before, that the same might be ready, as a matter of bounty, and not as of covetousness. Paul explains that he thought it best to finish the collection and have it ready before they arrive so that it will reflect their bountiful generosity, and not to seem as if Paul is only interested in taking their money. 6 But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. 7 Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let every man freely and willingly give the amount he has purposed in his heart, not by requirement, for God loves a cheerful willing giver. Paul makes an analogy with a farmer because he wants a bountiful generous harvest from the Corinthians which will glorify God. 
Many farmers know that they will reap a poor yield of crops if they sow their seeds sparingly. Many believers have inward poverty because of their outward stinginess, lack of liberality. They are not rich to God or His work. They say, I am under grace, I am not under the law, so I don't need to tithe. This is true, no one is required to pay a tithe in the dispensation of grace. Still, God loves a generous son or daughter. God wants us to give without fanfare, Rom. 12 colon 8, God loves a cheerful giver, but few are. It is human nature to be selfish, to hoard, and to only care about ourselves and not others. But God wants us to care about what He is doing, and for one another in the dispensation of grace. He wants us to promote His agenda and help those who are putting it forth. What is God's agenda today? It is to build the body of Christ and to help believers know that Christ has a ministry from heaven to us through Paul 520. God wants people to be saved and have sound doctrine built up in their inner man, 1 Tim 2 colon 4, which is the result of studying the Bible rightly divided, 2 Tim 2 15, God does not want our gift if we are going to give grudgingly, Deuteronomy 15 colon 7 dash 10, God doesn't want our gifts if we are giving out of obligation or so that we can look good to others. God does not want us to give at all if we can't give willingly and cheerfully. Giving is a grace, a decision of the mind. Grace motivates us to give the amount we purpose in our heart to bless others without expecting anything in return. Giving materially is a tangible expression of our love. Aid in God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Notice the use of the word all, all grace, always, all sufficiency, all things, every good work. Paul does not say that God is obligated to bless us physically, but that he is able to make all grace, empowerment of the Spirit, abound to us. His grace is sufficient to make us abound to every good work. In chapter 12, we will find out that God did not heal Paul physically, but said that his grace was sufficient. Christ's strength is made perfect in our weakness as we rely on him and his word to help us in our lives. God is not intervening physically, but he is intervening spiritually by reprogramming our minds, the way we think, with his word. How is God gracious? His spirit in us causes us to be gracious and generous to others. Being gracious is part of his character. He says, If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down, for that is his covering only, it is his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep? And it shall come to pass, when he creeth unto me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. Exodus 22 verses 26 and 27. God is kind, loving, considerate, thoughtful, generous, and compassionate. That is how God is. He will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. X 33 colon 19b. His grace to us is by Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1 verse 7 Grace is the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, being justified by his grace. Titus 3 verses 4 to 7 God had regard for mankind's helpless condition. We were slaves to sin, self, and Satan. We inherited the sin nature from Adam and Eve and added our own sins too, Rom. 5.12 God's nation of Israel, even with all their privileges and favored nation status, were no better than the rest of mankind. Grace is the free and unmerited favor of God shown towards man. Salvation is a free gift. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3 verse 24 9. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth for ever. 10. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness winky face. Paul quotes PSA. 1 12 colon 9 which is about the blessing of a God-fearing man. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. When the New Testament writers quote the Old Testament, it is to show fulfillment. When Paul quotes it, it is to show harmony, not fulfillment. Because the man gave to the poor, he will have rewards in the earthly kingdom. 
Giving materially to the poor is a righteous thing to do. Seed in the Bible can refer to money, descendants, or the word, in this context it is money. Now God who blessed the sower with seed both bless the giver with bread for food, enough money. For your own needs, multiply the money to others, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, reward them at the JSOC. God can work in our inner man to help us earn money, F. 316, God does not perform signs, miracles, and wonders today as he did in prophecy. He is not parting the Red Sea, raining manna from heaven, or stilling the storm. But, let me ask some questions. Did God put it into the hearts of the Macedonians to give to the little flock during this dispensation? Did other churches and individuals support Paul and his ministry financially? Does God put it in our hearts to help others today? The answer to all these questions is yes. God lives his life through the believer. This is the mystery of godliness, 1 Tim 3.16. It is Christ's spirit in our hearts that enables us to have righteous fruit, 122.411.616, Gal 5.22.23. It is righteous to give materially to those who are in need. The outflow of the overflow of our inflow should graciously be lavished on the needy. God has said all that two groups need to know in his word. He is not intervening physically today as he did for the nation of Israel in the previous dispensation with visual signs, PSA, 74 colon 9, 1 Cor, 122. However, Christ intervenes in us spiritually and uses others to correct and bless us, Colossians 3 verse 16. I believe he is more intimately involved in our lives than we can imagine, Phil. 419. He puts love for others into our hearts. Our sins. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. In mystery are forgiven when we believe and receive his imputed righteousness. 521. The instant we trusted in Christ's finished work on the cross, he gave us everything up front. We are accepted in the beloved. F. 1 colon 6, and receive all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, F. 1 colon 3. We are complete in Christ, Colossians 2 verse 10, we are sons of God, Phil. 2 15, we are joint heirs with Christ, Rom. 8 17, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, F. 1 13. God is the one who increases the fruit of righteousness. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 7 A righteous man works to feed himself and his family, he saves seeds for the next season, and then he shares with others, F. For 28, we are to take care of our family first, then after that, we can be generous to the Lord and others, 1 Tim 5 colon 8 a righteous man spreads his wealth far and wide. In prophecy, he did not harvest the corners of his field so the poor could glean from his abundance, Leviticus 23.22. This man's righteousness remains with him forever. We will have rewards at the judgment seat of Christ for our good works, 5.10. It is righteous to care about the needs of the less fortunate. Job was this kind of a man, Job 29 verses 12-17. I have heard that J. C. Penny gave 90% of his income. He was a smart business owner who sold plain classic clothes, without holes, and functional things at a good price. Money kept pouring in, and he kept pouring it out. He probably lived comfortably on 10%. He was not a hoarder, but generous to God and others. Paul wants the Corinthians to give material money generously because God has blessed them spiritually. 11 Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. We have his all-sufficient grace in all things for every good work which causes thanksgiving to be given to God for what he does through us. God enriches us, we enrich others, and God receives the glory. 1017. 12 For the administration of this service not only supplieth the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. 13 Whiles by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them, and unto all men, 14 And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you.
15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. For the dispensing of the monetary gift not only takes care of the needs of the poor saints in Judea, Rom. 1526, but it causes many to have thanksgiving to God. Paul said since we have received spiritual things, salvation and access to God by faith, it is our duty to bless the poor in Jerusalem, Rom. 1527, they in turn will bless God for his grace in you motivating you to give. The experiment, the opportunity to donate, of this ministration is proof to the recipients of your subjection to the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of the kingdom mentioned in Matt. 9.35 and Mark 1 verses 14 and 15. Matthew 10 verse 23 was contingent on Israel accepting Jesus as their king. It has not happened because Israel's program has been put on hold. Gal. 2 colon 7 dash 9 and the mystery has been inserted. Liberal distribution is their substantial gift to the saints. They will pray to God in gratitude for his grace to send his son and to motivate you to give. They will glorify God when they see the gospel of Christ working in you to make you generous givers. The Corinthians have the exceeding grace of God, 9 colon 8. They and we should be willing to give unto all men. God expands giving to all men. Christ lives in us, Gal. 2.20, and we are in him, 1 Thess. 1 colon 1, thanks will be given to God because of the grace of God in you. The grace of God in us is his spirit in us. It is like a magnet. It is Christ in us that makes people say there is something about that Christian that I want. His grace in us produces the life mentioned in Titus 2 verse 12. It was because God gave us his son, who loved us and gave himself for us that made grace possible. The unspeakable gift is the son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, Gal. 220, words cannot express the magnitude of God's love and grace to us. The Son sacrificed himself for our sakes, 8 colon 9, and the Father gave his only Son, John 3 verse 16, Rom. 832, for us, no one can outgive God. At our salvation by faith we receive his Son's imputed righteousness, 521, have eternal life, Titus 3 verse 7, his Spirit, 3 colon 3, and his life in us, 411. God wanted the people of Israel to offer a perfect unblemished lamb, Exodus 12 verse 11. That offering was a picture of God's perfect son, 1 Peter 2 verse 22, Heb 7 26. Some gave their worst, the sickly, and blemished, but the Father gave us his best. God has been so rich to us, so we should be rich to God. God sees everything we do and knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts, Heb 4.12. Paul told the Ephesians it is more blessed to give than to receive, Acts 20 verse 35. We labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth, F. 428. Not only that, but we have the unspeakable gift of his son's life in us, for 11. His kingdom on earth saints will have his spirit in them. They will receive their eternal bodies at his second coming, 1 John 3 verse 2, under the new covenant. Jesus is both the resurrection and the life, John 11 verse 25, for both his nation on the earth, his kingdom of priests, and the heaven-bound body of Christ. Did the Son know the exact hour he would die? Yes. The sinless Lamb of God died on Passover, Abib 14, at the exact time as the Passover Lamb was being slain, 3 p.m. He rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Abib 10, on the exact day predicted by Daniel, Dan. 9.25 In the past, Jesus had told his mother, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come, John 2 verse 4. But then he said, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour, John 12 verse 27. The Father's voice came again for the third time, John 12, 28, 29. He appeared at the temple to be inspected by the priests for four days, Exodus 12 verses 3 and 6. Then Messiah the Prince was cut off, ISA 53 colon 8, Dan 9, 26. They crucified him on Calvary, Luke 23 verse 33. To what extent did Christ save us? The Lord Jesus Christ asked, For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul?
Mark 8 verse 36. That losing of the soul has to do with the soul degenerating into a worm in the lake of fire. While on earth the Lord warned his people about the second death, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, Mark 9 verses 43 to 48. Christ kept the law perfectly, PSA, 40 colon 7, 8. Then he fulfilled every prophecy concerning his first coming, saying, It is finished, John 19 verse 30. Not only did Jesus Christ bear the sins of those in prophecy in his own body on the cross, 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Paul said he also died for us in mystery. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 521. He sacrificed his soul for us being made a curse for us, Gal. 313. He made his soul an offering for sin, and shall be satisfied, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities, he hath poured out his soul unto death, ISA. 53.10-12. In the dark hours, while Jesus was nailed to the cross, the Father poured out his wrath on his son's soul for our sins. He became a worm in our place. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Psalms 22 verse 6. His own received him not. John 1 colon 11b. He experienced death in the lake of fire on our behalf. He became a worm in our place. Jesus prayed to the Father, Let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. PSA. 69 colon 15. Satisfied, the Father raised him. Just as the whale vomited out Jonah upon the dry land, Jonah 2 verse 10, the grave spit out the sinless Son of God, Matt 12 40. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, the earth with her bars was about me forever, yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Salvation is of the Lord. Jonah 2 verses 5 to 9. Peter said, it was not possible that death should hold him, Acts 2 verse 24. Christ went to the extreme measure that he should taste death for every man, Heb 2 colon 9. He experienced the degeneration of his soul into a worm in the lake of fire, the second death, Revelation 20 verses 14 and 15, so we will never have to. Thank you, Lord. After he knew that everything was Accomplished, he dismissed his spirit and died physically. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23 verse 46. Our Savior did not take any shortcuts in saving us, but he went to the extreme. Why? Because we are extremely sinful, and yet, his love for us is beyond degree. At the cross, he purchased us from Satan, sin, and the second death with his own blood, Acts 20 verse 28. He saved us to the uttermost, Heb, 725, that is the kind of Savior we need and have. Our Lord Jesus is the unspeakable gift. He is the Redeemer for both those who will live in heaven and on earth. Here is the clincher, both groups will have the unspeakable gift, His life and spirit, in them. Paul's group will know Peter's group for all eternity for reasons why the contributions by the Gentile churches to the poor little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, the believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group, will bless God. 1. Peter's group glorified God for Paul's group's faith in the gospel of Christ. 2. Paul hoped to testify the gospel of the grace of God in Jerusalem, Acts 20 verse 24. 3. The needy saints thanked God in prayer for his grace through the Gentiles. 4. They would be more appreciative and less likely to hinder Paul's ministry. As a postscript, Paul and several saints did deliver the money to the little flock in Jerusalem. In the process, Paul almost lost his life and was arrested there, Acts 21 verses 17 and 31. Sadly, there is no record in scripture that any member of the little flock visited or helped Paul during his two-year incarceration in Caesarea. But, Paul gave without expecting anything in return and so should we. Reasons to separate from wrong doctrine. 1. To keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace f. 4 colon 3-62. Profane and vain babblings lead to more ungodliness 2 Tim. 2 16 3. 
Unsound words are cancerous to faith. 2 Tim 2 17 4 Errors can overthrow the faith of others. 2 Tim 2 18 5 It is honorable. 2 Tim 2 21 6 It is pure. 2 Tim 2 22 7 Perverting the gospel does not please the Lord. Gal 1 colon 7 dash 10 8 it corrupts good manners to acquiesce to wrong doctrine 1 Cor 1533 9 it is safe fill 3 colon 1 dash 2 10 it is a good and sample fill 3 17 11 ministers of the cross cannot minister with enemies of the cross fill 3 18 12 not all men have faith to Thess. 3 colon 2, 13. It approves us as ministers of God to Cor. 6 colon 6 dash 7, 14. We have no part with them that do not believe the truth to Cor. 6 15, 15. There is no communion with light and darkness to Cor. 6 14, 16. When we separate God receives us, 2 Cor 6 17, 17. It keeps us from the error of thinking gain is godliness 1 Tim 6 colon 5 18. It maintains order 2 Thess 3 colon 6 dash 7 19. To admonish a brother 2 Thess 3 14 20. It is a shame to speak of unfruitful works f. 5 colon 11 dash 12, 21. It manifests the wrong, making it known f. 5 13, 22. To maintain soundness in the faith, Titus 1 verse 13, 23. To prevent brothers slash sisters from turning from the truth, Titus 1 verse 14, 24. Redeems the time, you can get more work done without infighting f. 5 16, 25. A failure to separate will lead to unprofitable, vain wastes of time. Titus 3 verse 9 26. It removes heresy from the group. Titus 3 verse 10 27. It proves what is acceptable unto the Lord. F. 5 colon 7 dash 10 28. It protects the conscience of the weaker brother. 1 Cor. 8 12 29. It preserves the pillar and the ground of the truth 1 Tim 3 15 30. It purges out the leaven 1 Cor 5 colon 7 31. It is good judgment 1 Cor 5 colon 11 dash 12 32. To maintain godliness and the power of God 2 Tim 3 colon 5.